An LGBT center at an Ohio University is encouraging students to participate as drag queens in a campus event. Campus Reform has looked into several university job postings and found that diversity, equity, and inclusion requirements are very prominent, and Washburn University has removed a bust of Mao Zedong. We have all of the details on those stories and more. I'm Abigail Streetman, and this is Campus Countdown. In our number three story of the week, Mao Bust removed from Washburn University following a news report. Washburn University has removed a statue of Mao Zedong displayed in their political science department following a campus reform report on March 7th. Campus reform obtained a photograph of the empty display case showing that the Mao Bust and other objects have since been removed. Grant Armstrong, a lecturer in the Kansas University's political science department, told campus reform that the removal occurred soon after the report. Armstrong stated that, quote, every statue out of that glass cabinet has since been removed. It's very odd that they wouldn't just take out Mao. They insisted on taking out everything, end quote. This includes figures that were previously displayed, such as Bill Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Mitt Romney. So why would Mao be featured in a display case with these other political figures in the first place? Washburn University has not issued a statement on the matter, and they have not responded to campus reforms request for comment. In 2020, Washburn University also made national headlines for removing statues, and those were of Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. In our number two story of the week, diversity statements can determine who gets hired at universities. Here with all of the details on that story is campus reform correspondent, Caitlin Rafferty. According to a 2021 study, approximately one-fifth of university job postings require applicants to elaborate on their dedication to diversity by submitting a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement with their application. This study, conducted by the American Enterprise Institute, analyzed 999 job postings and found that 19% required applicants to submit a diversity statement in the job application materials. Campus reform looked into several universities' job advertisements, finding that diversity statements are in fact prevalent. Davidson College requires a statement of a candidate's potential contributions to Davidson's institutional commitment to diversity and inclusion. Arizona State University is seeking a physics lecturer who preferably displays a strong commitment to promoting participation of women and underrepresented minorities. U.S. San Diego's next director of training for its residency program must submit a statement of contributions to diversity as the psychology department is firmly committed to social justice, diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. The University of Denver, Nebraska University, and the University of Massachusetts Boston also have similar requirements. These universities who choose candidates based on their dedication to diversity rather than their academic performance are telling these individuals that their skin color is more important than their performance. They should be ashamed of themselves. Back to you, Abby. In our number one story of the week, LGBTQ Center encouraged students to perform drag at a rainbow gala. The LGBT Center, in collaboration with the Out in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, or OSTEM Club at Case Western Reserve University, hosted a rainbow gala recently. The event was described as a night of prom festivities and drag performances, and students at the university were given the opportunity to perform drag in the show. A drag workshop was previously hosted by the coordinating organizations on April 2nd and featured the two drag queens that would be performing at the gala. The workshop said that no experience was necessary to perform. The student performers were also asked to register as student performers on a campus engagement platform. A representative from the LGBTQ Center told Campus Perform that the drag workshop would focus on safety and makeup skills, but did not specify if dancing would be involved as promoted on their social media. 
The statement read, quote, we had two local professional drag queens do a small training on makeup and dance safety on Saturday that was open to all performers, end quote. The LGBTQ Center also stated that the center is funding its own project, but did not provide any more details. In a previous post on the group's Instagram regarding a Halloween drag performance, Ostom encouraged students to tip the performers using cash or Venmo. Students at Boise State University were also recently invited to participate in a themed drag show hosted by their Residence Housing Association. Camps Reform interviewed some of the students at the school and they were obviously upset. One senior told Campus Reform that young students should not be encouraged to should not be encouraged by public institutions to dress and act in a sexually explicit manner. And I think most people will agree with that. And now for my favorite segment, the woke tweet of the week. On April 25th, the Young Democratic Socialists of America at Bloomington tweeted a video of its protest, apparently outside of Indiana University Bloomington Vice Provost's office. Protesters were demonstrating for unionization. Earlier this month, graduate workers voted to extend their strike in an attempt to get the university to recognize the group as an official union. Over 1,000 Indiana Grad Workers Coalition members were participating in the strike, which officially began on April 13th. In the strike reauthorization vote, 97.3% of workers voted to extend the strike until April 27th. Throughout the strike, participating graduate workers have hosted picket lines, walkouts, and even a strike dance party. <laughs> One Instagram post from the Grad Workers Coalition says, quote, a union would give grad workers the voice needed to negotiate fees and wages, as well as yearly raises, equal protection, and treatment for international students, and more. The strike began after the university denied a petition to request a union election, which had been signed by more than half of graduate workers on campus. Can you imagine what the left would say if conservative students protested outside of the provost's office? That's all we have for you this week. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow along with all of the campus craziness at Campus Reform on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Abigail Streetman. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.